Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about uh, not necessarily a broad issue, but an issue that has been gradually gaining steam uh, over the last few months. With uh, it, ha it's really started in the early part of this year uh, with the debacle with Captain Marvel, and it's just kind of evolved from there. And that's the idea that Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, has honestly become a, a distrustful and a horrible site uh, to go by for most cases if you want to look at entertainment. Uh, and that is mainly because of the biases of their reviewers. Now, let me say this first off, is that uh, Netflix has been... Gra uh, not Netflix. Um, Rotten Tomatoes has been gradually changing its... Uh, basically, it, its layout over the last six to eight months... Uh, to basically make audience scores and uh, basically people that have, you know, public scores uh, to be almost negligible uh, and to promote the critic scores, which the critics on the site are mainly people that work for mainstream news or people like that, a lot of people that are in the pockets of the studios. So really, you know, the only thing that you had on the site that was relatively reliable was the audience score. And first thing they started was the, the want to see score. They erased that because of Captain Marvel, even though they denied that vehemently in the public. Um, and then you had the whole thing where they've been talking about getting rid of the user score altogether. Uh, I did another uh, video uh, similar to that talking about a critic from Sci-Fi Wire who basically said that uh, the public doesn't know what they want, therefore they shouldn't be allowed to voice their opinions on various film websites, including Rotten Tomatoes, um, about the film that they have seen because they're not uh, they're they're not reliable or they're trolls or they haven't seen the film and they they just want to demote it because of whatever reason they don't like the person in it or they don't like the person who directed it or uh, you know this that and the other thing so now we come to this point and Dave Chappelle has drawn up a ton of criticism over the last, uh, basically the last week since his new stand-up special, Sticks and Stones, premiered on Netflix. I have seen Sticks and Stones, and it is fucking hilarious. I highly recommend you watch it if you have Netflix uh, and you're a fan of Dave Chappelle, because a lot of the humor in it is very pertinent, and he he's ri basically just rips apart a bunch of stuff that is just hilarious. Now... The reason why I bring that up is because there has been such a negative uh, backlash to him, especially on the left, because a lot of the stuff that he made fun of uh, were very uh, nerve issues uh, to a lot of people on the left side of the aisle. Uh, and, you know, he you can go down the list. He makes fun of, uh, you know, victim culture, cancel culture. Uh, he makes fun of a lot of uh, stuff involving the LBGT, uh, a lot of stuff involving, uh, you know, whether political correctness and things like that, you know, what words you're allowed to use and what you're not. Uh, and really, uh, it was very pertinent. It was a very pertinent special. And the thing that I think a lot of people forget about when it comes to comedy is comedy is meant to be borderline offensive. You know, you have your Bill Cosby, you know, I hate using Bill Cosby, but your Bill Cosby-esque, you know, family-style humor. And then you have, you know, the real stand-up humor that you see in clubs. And that's the stuff that you see with Dave Chappelle a lot. You see that this very edgy humor, a lot of stuff similar to maybe stuff like Louis C.K., which he actually brings up in the special, which is really funny. Uh, you know, he brings up the stuff that happened with Kevin Hart. Uh, and, you know, a bunch of other stuff that's happened over the years involving comedians and basically the idea that comedy has to be sanitized. And by doing that, by sanitizing comedy, you are basically uh, negating it. You're negating its effectiveness. Comedy should be borderline. And I, I, I know I said this before, but comedy should be borderline offensive. And when I say that, it should be something that if somebody came up to you on the street and said it to you, it would be highly offensive. But because somebody is telling it as an obvious joke and they're not meant – I don't think that necessarily Dave Chappelle told any of those jokes in a malicious manner. I think he was pointing out illogical things that our society has chosen to raise to the forefront – uh, in a, maybe not illogical in all cases, but illogical in a lot of cases. And 
he's making fun of how obsessed we are with it. And that's the thing is that the other thing that is really good about comedy in a lot of cases, especially good stand up, is that it's very it's a, it's relevant. And I don't think Dave Chappelle could have done something any more relevant than what he did with that special. But leading back to what I was saying before about Rotten Tomatoes, Dave Chappelle's special on Rotten Tomatoes currently has a 0% critic score. Nobody would even give this 1%. And keep this in mind. Keep this very much in mind. Uh, when I say 0%, you there are, currently are only five critic scores that are in for this and they are all critics one is a top critic uh and it's it, it speaks to the people that contribute to rotten tomatoes on the critic side and why i don't think you should trust it and again i've, I've been through this argument before uh, a little bit in a video i did a while back but th this just reinforces it so much is to see that you had a pertinent comedy special that a lot of people really enjoyed. Now, I don't know if Netflix is going to release the watch numbers on this thing, but I can only imagine just from, you know, everybody that I've talked to has seen this thing in one shape or form, in one way, shape or form. And basically all of them loved it. Like, I, I haven't run into somebody that watched this special and said, oh, he's a horrible misogynist. No, they all said it was fucking hilarious. Maybe it's because they have a sense of humor, and most of these critics don't. But it speaks to a lot when you have five what are Rotten Tomatoes confirmed critics who appear to at least work for some kind of, of news or, or periodical agency that they have listed on the site, and not one of them was willing to give this, uh, you know, any form of a passing grade. It was all absurdly negative. And I actually have a lot of this pulled up in front of me, and l l I'm just going to read through a couple of them. Um, the earliest that I, be I believe we have on here is from one of their top critics, uh, and it's... <laughs> And I quote, uh, this is their review, like dropping in on a rascally uncle who doesn't know or doesn't care how much he's disappointing you. Again, what do you expect from Dave Chappelle? This is a guy who pushed the envelope back when he had a television show in 2003, and that's some shit that you probably couldn't air on television today because the FCC is a million times more sensitive. Uh, you know... When you're watching comedy, if you want sanitized comedy, I don't think you should be watching someone like Dave Chappelle. And here's the other thing. It was, it's very easy. All you have to do is not watch it. If you're going to be offended by it, then don't watch it. Nobody is forcing you, uh, Clockwork Orange style, to sit in a fucking chair with your eyeballs glued, glued or taped open and watching Dave Chappelle's stand-up special. And if you are, I think the police should probably be involved in that. But if, assuming that you're not, uh, why do you fucking care? A lot of people really enjoyed it. And I think everybody needs to take a step back because in the long term you're killing comedy you're killing innovation and good comedy because all you're promoting is the type of comedy that a lot of people find lowbrow you know it's not necessarily unfunny comedy but comedy like a family guy type of comedy where it's all mostly fart jokes and stuff like that you know it's mostly just jokes about bodily functions and things like that nothing that's pertinent and I find it hilarious that they all come out about this and nobody has any issue with, you know, South Park gets political a, a lot, really. You know, I haven't watched a lot of the most recent season of it, but they've gotten political a fair amount. And nobody seemed to get really pissed at them, at least recently. Um, but, you know, they, they keep going and, it, and, you know, they keep moving on and they don't give a shit what people think because they know that, in the end, they have people that really love the content that they make. And in this case, it's very similar for Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle went out and he did a comedy special. He did, and he did a really good set. Now, it does start off a little slow, I will admit that. But by the end of it, you're, you're laughing your ass off because it's so funny. And to be so offended that you're not even willing to give the comedy its own merit 
because, oh, he made fun of trans people. Oh, he made fun of school shootings, or he made fun of Me Too, or, or this or that. That's his fucking job, to make fun of those things. It's not his job to be sanitary and to cater to every single fucking person that watches the, the entire Netflix special. You know what a normal person does in that scenario if they don't find it funny? Turn it off. Again, turn it off. There's no reason why you couldn't just turn it off and move on with your fucking life. And this is something that he even makes fun of in there with cancel culture. The idea that, you know, if something isn't going your way, hey, it needs to go. It needs to go. It, 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 it's horrible. It's offensive. It, it, needs, it needs to be, to be uh, canceled. It needs to be removed. No, that's not always the case. Look, some things I think probably should be removed or at least shouldn't be made or shouldn't be attempted in some cases, like, you know, Universal Pictures The Hunt. I think that was a bad idea in general. Even the, uh, Although, in saying that, I don't necessarily think the movie shouldn't have been made, but maybe it should have been shelved for a number of years until, you know, the political climate had moved. But in this scenario, you're going to come out and you're just going to... You're, essentially, what these people want is they want to kneecap comedy. And they want to, and like I said before, they want to sanitize it. And that's not what good comedy is. Good comedy, again, should skirt the line. And we don't have enough people today that are willing to skirt the line. You always have those family-friendly comedians. You have your guys like Jerry Seinfeld. You have your people like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I think Kevin Hart's pre actually pretty family friendly, even with his uh, with his stand up. You know, everybody made a big deal about the gay thing, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, you have your sanitary comics that are relatively popular, but the thing is, the ones that stick around, the ones that stay fresh, and the ones that keep going and don't just die off, for the most part, are those edgy comics, those George Carlin's, Richard Pryor's. Uh, you know, Eddie Murphy, when he was doing stand-up, he was fucking amazing. People like that, they stick around. And Dave Chappelle is one of those guys. He's never going to not have somebody who wants to pay him money to be on a stage and tell jokes. And that is the core thing that I think people need to get out of this. These people can say all they want that it sucked and that it's horrible and that Dave Chappelle's out of touch and he's offensive – and you, you can tell people not to watch it. Vice News put out an article that said, don't watch Dave Chappelle's uh, stand-up special on Netflix. You want to know what that probably did? That probably boosted the viewership, because not only do people hate Vice News in a lot of ways, but the other thing is, a lot of the times when you tell somebody not to do something, guess what they do? They go and they fucking do it. They do exactly what you told them not to do. So I'm assuming that a lot of people probably went, as soon as they saw that, they went, oh shit, I gotta watch this thing now. And it, putting out an article like that is just stupid, because you know it's going to cause a counterintuitive reaction to what you want it to do. Uh, but, you know, that, that's just kind of my thing, is that Rotten Tomatoes is just, it's a cesspool. And I've said this before, is that you can't trust the professional critic anymore, and this is even more proof why. Um, but, you know, that's just my opinion on it. Uh, I want to know yours. Have you seen Dave Chappelle's new stand-up special? Did you like it? Did you not? Uh, do you think this reaction is appropriate? Do you think it's ridiculous like I do? Uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments. Hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?